In this video I want to show you how we can format a graph, specifically a histogram graph, because they often give us problems with the axes and so on. Um, so in this particular example, this actually comes from a Gentle Introduction to Stata, Chapter 5, um, one of the exercises. They want you to do a bar graph, but through a histogram function. It's usually better to just uh, create bar graphs through the histogram option um, of this particular variable called stress work, and it's got these um, response categories. Now you may decide to rename a variable or change the categories around. We're not going to deal with that in this video. So the first thing we want to do is go to graphics. And again, even though we want it to be, look like a bar chart, it's actually going to be a histogram. And let's type in stress work a variable. And you'll notice that it's something of a categorical variable, so the data are discrete. That's how you turn in a histogram into a bar graph, basically. And you know, no one ever knows what density means and stuff, so let's just do frequency. And then, since we want to do this two particular bar graphs, we want the stress work responses for men and then for women separately. So we'll click on the by tab and draw subgraphs for unique values of the variable sex, men and women. Now, by default, it's going to create two histograms side by side, horizontally like this. Um, the alternative is if you want to do subgraph organization and switch them to columns. Um, it would put them over and above each other. Sometimes it works to do one or the other. We're going to leave it as um, horizontal subgraphs right now. Hit accept and hit OK. And this is what you um, start with. So let's go ahead and start graph editor here. Um, let's deal with some of the, very quickly, it's just some low hanging fruit. So if I wanted to capitalize male here, I just click on it, go up here, and capitalize it. And then I want to hit return if I want it to stick. Otherwise, if I just click somewhere else, it wouldn't actually make that change. And also, while I'm highlighted on the whole thing, if I want to change the size, I can do that. It looks pretty good as is. Okay. Same thing, frequency. If I want to change anything, type in here, and then I have to hit return. But then, if you want to change the size, do it there. Margin refers to the distance between that um, title or label and the values next to it. Um, so that's low hanging. The other uh, less obvious thing is title. I don't have a title in here, so I'm going to want to go down here and click on title. And here I can type one in. It's often nice to number your graphs. Um, it's often hard to know what order you'll use them, um, so there's a little danger there. But um, so we could call this um, bar graph of job stress uh, by gender. Okay. And that's what it looks like if you want to increase the size, the color, all that kind of stuff. But that looks pretty decent. Another thing is note. You'll notice if you click on that, it, it activates this note. I don't really need that information now, so I'm going to delete it and hit return. The note still exists there if I want to use it later on, but I don't need it for now. So. So let's get to the stickier stuff, which is the x-axis. Um, and who knows why it throws you for a loop and leaves out ticks and such. But um, the trick is to just go ahead and click on an x-axis, and then right, then right click and click on axis properties. And that's more of the overall axis properties that we can change a lot of things in. Um, and the first thing I like to do if I'm missing ticks here, and I know what numbers they should be because I know what my values were, I'll just go ahead and edit or add individual ticks and labels. And so you'll notice I would like to get rid of 0 and 6, but it's not letting me delete them. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and add for now. And let's We need a 1, so we'll hit OK. Leave the label option blank for now. Let's add a 3, hit OK, and we need a 5. Yeah, okay. All right. So then go ahead and close that. Now the other thing is we may not want to actually use these numbers because no one really knows what they mean. So we're going to go to label properties and show in labels, but we also want it to sh use the value labels. So we'll just click on that box and we're going to apply, and you'll see that there are the value labels show up, but they'll they're horizontal and they overlap each other. So what we want to do is angle them instead of being horizontal. Um, we could look at vertical not easy to read. So let's go to the 45 degree angle and apply. Much easier to read. So let's hit OK. And let's hit OK. Okay. So looking a lot better. 
Um, we still want to get rid of this nap and where that came from. It used to be zero, but it turned to nap. Who knows? And then I want to get rid of six. So just right click on your six here and go to tick label properties. And this is where we're trying to edit that individual tick label. Um, you think you could just get rid of six, but that's not going to do it. The easier way is just click on custom style and then uncheck these two boxes. Because you're telling it to do a custom style, but then you're telling it not to actually show a label or show a tick. And hit apply. And it looks like it did it, so hit OK. Nope, didn't like that. Let's try it again. Tick label properties, custom style, uncheck those. Maybe the apply thing screwed it up, so let's just hit OK. Looks better. So don't hit apply, just go ahead and hit OK. A little ghost in the machine there. Okay, same thing with the nap. Oh, and it also got rid of our one. So guess what we get to do? Right click. Go back to Access Properties, Edit or Add Individual Ticks, and let's add our one back in. 200 bucks if you can tell me why that happens, but close that and hit OK. Alright, so right click on the nap, tick label properties, custom style, uncheck show label, and show tick, and hit OK. Alright, this time none of the others disappeared. Um, so let's head it. So the only other thing we have here is we've got really long labels, particularly the one in the middle. So maybe we want to edit that one. You just right click on that one, tick label properties. And instead of neither agree nor disagree, let's just say neither. And hit OK. Okay. And you can decide whether you want to abbreviate strongly agree, strongly disagree. I'm going to leave them as is. Okay. So that's how you do that. Let's go over and do this one real quick. Right click, access properties. Go ahead and add our individual ticks to start. We know we need a one. Hit OK. We have a two. We need a three. And add three. Add five. Hit OK. And close that out. Okay. And now let's see if we can get rid of the six. We'll right click on the six. Tick label properties. Custom style. Show label. Uncheck show label. And uncheck show show tick. Hit OK. Good, our strongly agree didn't disappear that time. And then to get rid of the nap, let's right click on it, tick label properties, custom style, uncheck these boxes, and hit OK. And then we still want to shorten that one, so let's go to tick label properties for that one, and delete and return. Okay. So you just do some final touches, you know, maybe capitalize job, increase the size of that, and so on. And and once you're all done, you would just stop Graph Editor and go ahead and say, yes, I want to save these changes. You can save it as a GPH file that you can open up later in Stata. And once you do that, you'll have the option of just, it'll show you the graph you've created. If you want to right-click and copy, you can paste it into a Word document. So that's how you do some of the more frustrating um, um, editing. Um, some of you might run into other things. The trick is to just kind of poke around and see what you can do. It requires a lot of play and a lot of clenched teeth, honestly. So, um, hope that helps a little bit.